Hello, so this is going to be quite a simple video on helmets and what I wanted to do in this one is basically give an explanation of what factors make important things, you know, and the protection factors of the helmet, if that makes sense. So basically, on the left we have a Swiss model M1918 Manganese steel helmet, or essentially a steel helmet mixed with Manganese. In the middle we have a British Mark 7 uh, helmet which has a Kevlar filler. And on the right we have a British Virtus Revision Helmet, or whatever you want to call them. It's technically an American ECH, but, um, you know, slightly different. So, the helmet on the left is the weakest of these helmets because it's steel. It's a very good quality steel helmet, but, it, you know, the problem is with steel, it gets quite heavy. So these are generally made quite thin. Uh, the only purpose of these helmets originally was to protect the wearer from shrapnel. Now, they would give some ballistic protection, but the point of the helmets were basically, you know, shell, uh, shell shrapnel if they explode and shrapnel goes flying, or, for example, if, you know, dirt was kicked up and rocks from a shell, basically it works like a hard hat in that regard. It's just to stop your skull getting crushed or, you know, cut up from shrapnel and rocks and mud flying about when shells go off. If they protect you from bullets, that's a bonus. So, obviously, if you have several steel helmets, the better they protect you from bullets compared to each other. Again, that makes them probably better, but that wasn't what they were designed for. They were eventually replaced with Kevlar helmets, as you see in the middle, and the point was with Kevlar helmets was that it was stronger per weight or size of the helmet. They tend to be a bit thicker, but they are better. Like, Kevlar helmets generally can pretty reliably stop pistol rounds, except for the 762 by 25 mm Soviet Tokarev round. They tend to still be pretty good at penetrating Kevlar helmets. But, in general, basically, the steel helmets, if you were lucky, would stop a 9mm, not all of them would do that. Um, Kevlar helmets are pretty good at stopping 9mm and 45 British uh, Mark 7 helmets could just about stop a 762 by 25 mm round. And then you have the really interesting helmets like the ECH. So these are modern thermoplastic ones. Um, again, it's using a different material in them, and they can basically stop any pistol or rifle round, but that doesn't mean the person wearing it would survive. You know, your neck could still snap, you could still get enough trauma to the brain that it would kill you, you know, back force deformation and all that. But the point is, you know, the helmet again is much stronger. So, what you need to consider with helmets for protection is, I suppose, what are you using it for, but also, what is the helmet made of, how much heft head coverage does it give, um, and what is the materials of it made from. Because a lot of people with helmets seem to forget either materials they're made from or coverage they give. You know, essentially, I like the look of this helmet, therefore it's the best, not, you know, what is the helmet designed for and what is it protecting me from. So, for example, why the Swiss one is an oversized Stauhelm, and, you know, everybody likes the look of German Stauhelms, they weren't all that protective just because of the fact of the steel qualities used in them. The Swiss ones are actually better than the German ones, but still, you know, as much as it's a cool-looking design that gave good head coverage, it wasn't that strong at actually protecting you. Weirdly, and I doubt a lot of people believe this, but you can look up ballistic tests to prove it, Soviet SSH-40 helmets, at least when made well, you know, on a good factory shift, were probably the most protective of all World War II helmets, probably closely followed by the American M1. Uh, British Mark III helmets weren't bad either. The old British Mark II helmets are actually pretty sturdy. The issue was they didn't give good, very good head coverage. So you've got these kind of weird factors with helmets, you know, where there's some that look like they'd be very protective, like the German style helmets, but generally the steel qualities used weren't very good. Then with Kevlar helmets, obviously bear in mind it depends on the thickness of the Kevlar and the shape of it, a bit like with the steel helmets, that, you know, there's a lot of factors. Generally Kevlar for Kevlar is pretty similar, but, for example, that Mark VII helmet is quite thick and has a decent amount of Kevlar in it, and it's quite domed, so it's good at, you know, causing rounds to sort of deflect off of it, um, potentially, you know, ricochet off, whereas if you had a more sort of 90 degree angle Kevlar helmet, it wouldn't necessarily do as well. Which is why you can watch several videos of Kevlar helmets being tested, and there's certain rounds, some stop and some don't, where it just comes down to a couple of millimetres difference in the Kevlar thickness. And then you've got something like the ECH or the Virtus helmet, uh, you know, the Battle Skin Cobra, or the stupid name they give it, um, you know, which is even better at protecting you, but... You know, weirdly, all of these are kind of Stauhelm looking, aren't they? I suppose it's because everybody copied the Stauhelm in the 80s onwards because it was such a good design. The Mark is the goofiest looking one because it's a lot rounder, but, you know, there isn't all that much difference between a ECH style helmet and a, um old Stauhelm design. But yeah, so remember, when you're thinking about helmets and how they protect you, it totally comes down to how much of your head it covers, because if there's a bit of your head the helmet doesn't cover that, but it's not going to be protected. What it is the helmet's designed to stop, you know, and materials and quality of the helmet, really. Obviously, angle of the helmets and all that make a difference as well, and thickness, but in general, it's just down to steel quality and steel helmets, you know, and um, Kevlar thickness and whatever else, just like how a British Mark VI helmet is crap compared to the Mark VI A, 
because the Mark VI was a thin bit of ballistic nylon in the filler, the Mark VI A was filled with Kevlar filler. So no wonder the Mark VI A does massively better on any sort of tests it's put through, because it's a much stronger filler material. But there you go. Um, it'd be nice, obviously I doubt this video is going to change anything, but it'd be nice if when people consider how good helmets were from history, they actually look at how protective they were, not which ones look coolest, because in all honesty I'd rather look a bit weird with an East German M56 on and be alive, than look, you know, cool in my... Um, Hugo Boss M40 Stahlhelm and have my skull ripped open by shrapnel. So there you go.